अहंकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जो गल चरण सोल चिन्ह जे ह नजर समी पे रहो अमारी ए ह नजर समी पे रहो अमारी ए ह घनश्याम महाराज निज हरिकृष्ण महाराज निज ठाकुर जी महाराज निज सुप्रीम ऑल माइडी और बलोवेद घनश्याम महाराज सदगुरु श्री मुक्तानंद स्वामी सेवित ठाकुर जी महाराज और डिवान पूज्य गुरु जी पूज्य संतो और नौ भी बोयाधाम परिवार भक्तों जय स्वामीनारायण अंटिल आवर योर कोर्स बिगेन्स फॉर द न्यू ईयर वी लाइक टू डू वेरियस डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ प्रेजेंटेशंस um and topics that all we bhaktos can reflect on and understand so that uh you can take something home <coughs> so this sampraday is called the swaminarayan sampraday meaning we can say sampraday sect a movement a religion but the title of it is the swaminarayan movement or the swaminarayan sampraday there's many many different kinds of sampradays and sects and religions and and different movements that are in the world and their title is based off of different different things such as jainism buddhism uh uh hinduism inside there's many sects but those are very very general overall religions inside there's many branches but this one religion or swaminarayan religion swaminarayan movement is very very uh famous in way in one way that everyone is known that when they see a tilak chandlo on a person's forehead a hari bhagat's forehead that this is a swaminarayan's bhagat identified by bhagwan's name this is a swaminarayan's bhagat but that name is no ordinary name just approximately 2 weeks ago saflai ekadashi which was swamran mahamantra uh, ekadashi uh, that very day bhagwan swami narayan himself actually spoke the swami narayan mahamantra for the first time from his mouth and introduced it to the world and at that particular time many many experienced samadhi or transcendental tra- uh, trance nonetheless uh, many many attained liberation became brahm swarup and became very very uh, humbled and attained a peace of heart now that swami narayan maha mantra is something that we want to reflect on today it is no ordinary maha mantra it is not anything small it is something that is very very powerful just one mantra swami narayan <clears throat> in the vedic parampara there is many many different mantras which are very long there's many many different stutis that are very long and they are very very difficult to understand but bhagwan swami narayan is a practical god bhagwan swami narayan is so practical that he actually brought this mantra here and he knew that the people of kaliyug would not be able to remember the long mantras and long stutis so instead bhagwan swami narayan gave them his own name swami narayan now swami narayan is a word that many have heard of in the world but what is the glory what is the greatness what is the importance of this word that's what we want to take a look at today and by doing so one will be able to understand and one will be able to feel more empowered to chant bhagwan's name because anything we do <clears throat> anything that we do in the world if we have the mahima or if we have uh the glory behind doing it then we would feel more empowered to do that very activity kriya or karma for example if we knew that 
there's many, many places in the world that make pizzas, but there's this one place that makes the best pizza in the whole United States. If we knew that very place, and if we knew that we had a chance to go there and eat, then our excitement, our enthusiasm would grow even the more. In the same way, the Maha Mantra, if we learn its last, its maima, if we learn its glory, that how strong is it, how powerful is it, what, is, what, what can it do, then we would be able to chant it even more and we would feel impelled to chant it even more. So let's move on to our presentation slide over here. <clears throat> For our first slide, uh, we'd be, uh, the title of this presentation I call is The Best Medicine. <clears throat> and why is that? Well, in the introduction, there's a question that is asked here. What do our mothers do when we get sick? Now, that's something that is a process that you've probably seen in your household everyday life. Uh, before this corona, or even right now, what do our mothers do when we get sick? Well, first and foremost, she's gonna ask what's wrong. <laughs> she's gonna ask that, um, is your stomach hurt? Does your head hurt? What is wrong? And then you tell the symptoms, and then your mother goes to the medicine cabinet and finds the perfect medicine and then gives it to you. Um, and at that time, <clears throat> it's a little relief. You feel actually well, but it doesn't completely solve your problem. It doesn't completely solve your problem and there's some kind of illness that's still inside of you. So then, what's the secondary step? Well, we have to go to the doctors. That's the usual method. When your parents can't solve your illness, may it be a fever, may it be something else, then you have to go to the doctors. Now when you go to the doctors, it's something that uh, your doctor does the same process as your mother and asks that what is wrong with you? How are you feeling? Does this hurt? Does that hurt? All these different kinds of questions are asked. And then after that, a conclusion is um, uh, decided that your doctor says that you have this. <clears throat> and the prescription is written and then you go to your local pharmacist and get your medicine. And for one week or 10 days, you take a course. You take a course. You take a course. And then afterwards, you become well. So then, is there such a perfect medicine that cures everything? That's the question. <clears throat> There's many kinds of illnesses out there. There's many kinds of diseases out there, but is there one you can say master key or one and all that solves everything? That is the question. Well, <clears throat> there is in the spiritual world, there is something that we can take and do to that, all our problems can be solved. So we would like to take a look at what that medicine is. <clears throat> it's the Swaminarayan Mahamantra. The Swaminarayan Mahamantra <clears throat> can solve all problems. Now, you're probably wondering that, what if I have academic problems? What if I have social problems? What if I have financial problems? You're saying that I'll solve spiritual problems, but I'm not interested, or I don't have that many spiritual problems. I have more of the financial problems. I have more of the social problems. I have more of, of uh, those worldly problems. Then, can that be also resolved? Well, your answer is yes. Because Bhagwan Swaminarayan is a very, very practical God. Just like how the 24 incarnations that came about on this earth, these 24 incarnations came about on this earth and performed different, different kinds of tasks and uh, different, different types of uh, duties. They have given different, different methods to solve problems, but some have been left behind, but Bhagwan Swaminarayan is one God. That just by writing the mere Shiksha Patri, Bhagwan Swaminarayan covers worldly problems and spiritual problems all at the same time. By following the Shiksha Patri, one can solve one's, you can say, worldly problems easily. Nonetheless, by chanting the Mahamantra Swaminarayan, that's even more greater 
and more e much easier to do if we can do it. So we would like to learn the glory of this Mahamantra Swami Narayan that we listen to on a daily basis. When we come to Mandir, we can listen to it. Uh, we listen to it when there's dhun going on, chanting of Bhagwan's name. We, when we're encountering two Hari Bhaktos for the first time uh, in a long period of time, then we bow down to each other and say Jai Swami Narayan. Such kinds of different, different types of affairs when we have and when we encounter, that mantra is always zooming around the environment. But we kind of take it as that mantra is kind of like a hi or a hello. Just like how we tell our friends, hey, how are you doing? Or what's up? What's going on? Something like that. That mantra is also now chanted in that way or said in that way, Jai Swami Narayan, Jai Swami Narayan. But what is the glory behind this mantra? The name. Is it that powerful? Is it very powerful? How powerful is it? Well, that's what we want to look by two prasans in a couple of videos in this presentation. So first and foremost, there's four things that the mantra does. Number one, it gives us peace. Number two, it gives us courage. Number three, it gives us stability. And number four, it gives us confidence. All these four types of virtues and you can say features are very, very vital in our human life. Obviously a human, first and foremost, is looking for peace. Now, many, many famous people and millionaires and billionaires in the world have attained fame, yet have not attained a peace of heart. I can even give the example of the late Michael Jackson, who was a millionaire and was very famous and wanted to live for over a hundred years. He had that kind of thought. Um, he lived in such a manner that uh, you know nothing would uh, damage his health. Yet, at the age of 50, he left his body, his soul left his body, and now he's no longer on this earth. He had everything but didn't have a peace of heart. If he was satisfied with his life, then it would be a different story. Nonetheless, many, many famous people they attain fame, as I said, fortune. They have everything they want. But this one element, due to missing it, many, many commit suicide. Many, many do very, very bad things to their life. Take drugs, drink alcohol, to find some kind of peace. But peace is not anywhere in the world. Peace is all inside of us, where Bhagwan lives, and his Mahamantra Swami Narayan. Nonetheless, the second virtue is courage. When we have or when we are in some kind of difficulties, may it be worldly or may it be some kind of problems in our internal uh, enemies such as lust, anger, greed, according to the Loya 6 chapter, Bhagwan Swaminarayan says that when you attain or when you have such kind of bad thoughts inside of you, um, chant Bhagwan's name, Swaminarayan, 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 clap aloud. And also, uh, Maharaj says that you can also chant such Sadguru Muktanan Swami's name and also those bad thoughts would go away. Such is the power of the mantra Swami Narayan as well as our Adiguru Muktanan Swami. So we are very fortunate. Nonetheless, <coughs> that courage is given when we have Mayma and glory that this is no ordinary name but this is the Supreme Bhagwan Swami Narayan's name then that, mayma, that courage is also instilled stability, that's our third feature stability is something that everyone needs in order to live a life that is very very accurate and efficient without stability our life is kind of like a roller coaster but the Swami Narayan mantra is so powerful that it slows our mind down, it slows the waves down of our mind and takes us in a very stable form uh, where we can clear, uh, clearly think without any kind of clouded vision and make the right decision. That's why 
By chanting the Maha Mantra, Swami Narayan, stability is gained. And finally, confidence. Something that each and every soul, each and every atma, each and every individual needs in one's life. Confidence is such a feature that without confidence, one would not be able to do anything. But if one has confidence in oneself, if one has confidence in Bhagwan, if one has a confidence in Puja Guruji, our, our Guru Parampara, Sadguru Sri Muktanan Swami, Dada Guruji, everyone, then one would be able to do different, different kinds of tasks on this earth to please Maharaj and the Akantik Satpurush and Santo and Bhakto and this whole satsang. So these four elements that I thought of would be gained by merely chanting the Maha Mantra Swami Nare. There's many, many more, but taking practical people's situation into uh, consideration, these four elements stood out the most. Moving on. <clears throat> now we'd like to take a look at a prasang. A prasang of Kesarbai, who is from Dehisara, which is a village in Buj, Kutch. Now, Kesarbai, let me just set the background first so you understand. <clears throat> Kesarbai was a very, very staunch devotee of Bhagwan Swaminare. And he was a farmer by occupation. And every day he would uh, go to his farm and um, there was a well there. And he would uh, take water for his family and come back every morning, approximately three or four o'clock in the morning. Now what had happened was that sometimes um, the villagers would tell Kesarbe that please do not, uh, you know, do something about your farm. There is a venomous snake uh, that is living there and, uh, you know, it is bound to bite you or the villagers that are coming to wash their clothes by the well. So please do something, kill the venomous snake. <clears throat> now, Kesarbe was a very, very firm devotee of Bhagwan Swami, and so he said that my Maharaj's Agna in the Shikshapatri is never to kill even the smallest insect, then how can I kill the snake? I'm sorry, but I would not be able to do so. Saying this, he went about his day. Now, some time passed by, and early morning one day, around 4 a.m., when Kesarbai was going to his farm, and he went to the well, and he drew some water, and when he was turning back, the cobra must have been hidden um, underneath, um, you can see a rock or some leaves, and Kesarbai accidentally stepped on the snake, the venomous cobra, king cobra. He did not know. He could not see, it was 4 a.m. in the morning, so it's very, very dark. And right there, the snake bit Kesarbe in, in the leg. Now, king cobras are one of the most venomous snakes in the world. And all of you kids out there that are watching, um, how strong and potent is venom? That's what we want to establish here before I continue to the story. So, let's take a look at this video. Ah, so refreshing. You're taking a vacation to Australia, feeling the warm desert heat and watching the kangaroos hop on by, when all of a sudden, BOOM! You're bit by a snake! Oh no, what do we do? Whoa, there's more! Hundreds of snakes start slithering out and towards you, and they start biting you everywhere. And just then, you wake up. It was all just a dream. But we should know how venoms work just in case this horrible, horrible situation ever happens to you in the future. First of all, what is a venom, and how does it hurt you? And will anti-venoms actually protect you? A venom is an animal-made toxin that gets into your body, usually through an injection. There are three different types of venoms, and they all attack your body in different ways. Hemotoxic venom destroys red blood cells, kills cells and tissue, and generally attacks our cardiovascular system. It can lead to organ failure and heart failure. Neurotoxic venom affects the nervous system by making neurons continuously fire. This leads to muscle spasms and lack of muscle control, including muscles that help us breathe. Cytotoxic, also known as necrotic venom, is more local and kills cells near the bite site. It can lead to inflammation, blisters, lesions, and tissue death. So what are venoms? 
what are they made of? It's a combination of proteins and enzymes that work together to cause damage to our bodies. Venoms are not made of a single protein or a magical toxin that causes all of these issues. There are proteins made of the same building blocks as the proteins in our bodies. Animals create venoms to protect themselves or to debilitate prey for easier catch and digestion. There are many venomous snakes, fish, frogs, spiders, scorpions, octopuses, centipedes, bees, and wasps, and more! Obviously, these venomous animals are so populous because having venom is very often advantageous. So are there any ways to beat venoms? Well, obviously the animals themselves must have found a way, right? Well, kind of. Venoms are made of proteins and enzymes, and if stored in the right location, they will not be harmful. Though I highly recommend against this. If you drink a vial of the most venomous substance on the planet, you will not be harmed, because our stomachs break down the proteins. If these proteins can be made, they can be broken down. Venoms can also be hindered by antibodies, also known as antivenom. The antibodies will attach to the protein, either making it useless or marking it for destruction by other cells. Animals often have antibodies for their own venom, but surprisingly, they can still die if they bite or sting themselves. So hopefully you never get attacked by hundreds of venomous snakes, but if you do, let's hope there's some antivenom nearby. It's probably your only hope. As always, thanks for watching, and of course, have a super duper delicious day. Now, before we continue on with the story, guess it'll be there back to their situation. We just found out how potent the venom is. There's three types of venom. I'm sure you kids didn't know about that. And it's very, very strong, and it can hurt us very, very uh, quickly. But... Going back to our story, if you were in that situation, what would you do? What would be your reaction? How would you do? How would you react? Would you run to the villagers? Would you run to the hospital, your local doctor? Would you run to your family? What would you do? That's number one, something that we should ask. And number two, most probably, you'd scream, cry, or maybe even become dramatic. That's a normal reaction. Now, pause right there. Thinking like that, let's go back to our story. Let's put our mentality, what we would do, and then pause. Now, Kisarpi, in that 4 a.m. time, he became bit by the snake. And right there and then, Kisarpi started to chant the Mahamantra Swami Narayan. Swami Narayan, Swami Narayan, Swami Narayan, Swami Narayan. He chanted the Mahamantra Swami Narayan, but not only that, but he didn't go to his home, he didn't go to a doctor, he didn't go anywhere. He went to the mandir, the local temple of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, and he sat there and started to chant Swami Narayan. Now what had happened was the local villagers found out that Kesabe was bitten by that very snake that they had warned him about. So they went to Kesarbe immediately very, very worried. And they knew some uh, black, black magic, um, you can say uh, mystics that lived in uh, nearby villages. And they told Kesarbe that we wanted to call these mystics for you so they can remove your venom by black magic. Kesarbe said, no need. My black magic, my anti-venom, everything is in my mouth, which is the Mahamantra Swami Narayan. No need to uh, bring anyone. So Kesarbe rejected. Now what had happened was that due to the venom, his body started to swell, swell up a little bit. So those villagers started to become worried. The, uh, the family members started to become worried. So Kesarbe said that I would like you to do one thing with me. I'm chanting this Mahamantra Swami Narayan. And I would like all of you to also chant Swami Narayan Mahamantra with me in this temple. Now, the miraculous thing is that Kesarbe started to chant, all those villagers started to chant, and 24 hours passed by, and surprisingly, this is actually a true story, surprisingly, that venom that of the king cobra, instead of spreading through the body and uh, destroying the vital, element, uh, vital organs of Kesarbe, completely became diluted 
and the venom was removed from Kesar Bey's body due to chanting the Swaminarayan Mahamantra. Now kids, think about it. Even Sadhguru Shri Gunatitanan Swami says in his Vat that the Mahamantra of Swaminarayan is very, very powerful, that it is able to remove the venom of a snake and it is able to destroy the materialistic object pleasures in the mind and is able to make one Brahm Rup. Sadhguru Gunatitan Swami has said this, so there is no way that it is false. But this is what happened to Gesarbe. And obviously, one should not try anything like this and test Bhagwan. But Gesarbe also had faith in Bhagwan Swami Narayan and had the glory that Bhagwan Swami Narayan is the Supreme Lord. He is Kartaharta. He is the all doer. And whatever he is doing is for my well. While having this understanding, Kesarbe chanted the Mahamudra Swami Narayan. That's why that venom did not affect Kesarbe. Not because he was only chanting the name, but he had glory of Bhagwan's name. That's why. <clears throat> Moving on, Arpuja Guruji. Arpuja Guruji is a prime example of such kind of faith in Maharaj, Thakurji Maharaj, our Guru Parampara that due to Puja Guruji, um, there's this one prasang that I think I shared uh, two, two or three kathas ago regarding how, just want to shortly narrate, uh, that regarding how Guruji had, uh, was uh, having uh, something built in the Gurukul. And two workers uh, were working and they spotted two king cobras. So with their pickaxes, um, the, the two workers killed uh, the two snakes and Guruji found out. When Guruji found out, Guruji did three upvases, meaning without eating any food or drinking any water. Now the santos there became worried that Guruji has not eaten anything for one day, two days, three days, and they would keep approaching uh, Guruji and asking, pleading, that Puja Guruji, please eat something, please eat something. Guruji said, that how can I eat something? I am doing tap. I am chanting Bhagwan's name, Swami Narayan, Swami Narayan, Swami Narayan, so that the pop that these workers have accumulated would be destroyed, and they would uh, and those snakes that were killed would attain Akshar Dham. Over two snakes, Puja Guruji worried and did three fasts. Think about it. Snakes do not speak. Snakes do not have any kind of relation. But Guruji's compassion for each and every creature, seeing Bhagwan inside of everyone, that is something that Guruji has. And due to that, Guruji was able to do such kind of bhajan. And due to that bhajan, due to chanting Bhagwan's name, Swami Narayan, both of those snakes went to Akshudam and those workers also were relieved of their sins. That is our Puja Guruji's compassion. And over here in this video, you'll be able to see the Guru is here. He is actually in the great city of India. And the Guru is still sitting for the Guru in the Guru in the Guru in the Guru. And overlooking the work that has been done in the Guru 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 in the Guru. See, by spinning the mara and doing so, um, <clears throat> having and doing well for everyone, he is chanting the Mahamantra Swami Narayan. Moving on to our second prasang for today, Dosabai. Dosabai was, <clears throat> uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, you can say, he was a Harimukta of the city of Amdavad, and Dosabai was the ethnicity of, you can say, Muslim. And due to that, at first he did not believe in Bhagwan Swami Narayan, but he fell in love when he heard the mantra Swami Narayan, Swami Narayan, and he fell in love with Bhagwan. So he chanted that mantra on a daily basis. Now, obviously, each and every religion has their each and every different chant, 
different beliefs, principles. But those have by started to develop firm faith in Bhagwan Swami Narayan and started to chant the Mahamantra Swami Narayan. Now his family members found out that he is chanting some other mantra from some other religion. So they started to prevent him. <clears throat> they started to torture him in many, many disastrous ways. But in no way did Kisar, or in no way did Dosabai let go of the mantra Swami Narayan. They tried to kill and torture him three times, but Maharaj rescued him every single time because of the Mahamantra Swami Narayan. And finally, it is said that Kesarbai was actually buried alive by his family. Yet Bhagwan Swami Narayan somehow came and saved him and relieved him. And at the end, the family members had to ask for forgiveness due to their mistake. So without even meeting Bhagwan Swami Narayan, just by chanting Bhagwan Swami Narayan's name, Dosa Bhai was relieved, rescued, and <clears throat> was given respect due to his fam uh, given respect from his family members and the people around because of just merely chanting the Mahamantra Swami Narayan. This is how powerful the Mahamantra Swami Narayan is. May we understand this today or may we understand it tomorrow? That is not the question. But that is Bhagwan Swami Narayan's you can say power or samarthi in this yuga of kari yuga. Moving on. <coughs> There's a kari that Sadhguru Sri Nishkuran Swami gives us that we can remember in our life so that we can also understand how compassionate Bhagwan is. Compassionate Bhagwan is. And that kari is Ajsudipanamari Jivan Januchu, Rakocho Khabar Sari Jivan Januchu. Very, very short kari. But from this kari, we can take a lot. In this kari, Nishkaran Swami narrates that even till this time today, my Lord, you have been taking care of me all this time, my Lord. Now, that is not anything that's ordinary. Yes, our mother can take care of us. Our father can take care of us. Our grandfather and grandmother can take care of us. Our sister and brother can take care of us when we were young. But Bhagwan Swami Narayan himself, the Supreme Lord of Lords, Otari, taking care of us, that's something different. That is something that is outside of the picture. That is something that is very, very unique and very, very unheard of in this world. <clears throat> Bhagwan Swami Narayan, dear Bhaktos, is the only Lord only Bhagwan that comes at the end of each and every devotee's deathbed and takes that devotee, takes that soul to Akshardham. There is no other stories of other, <coughs> other uh, incarnations or any prasangs where that Lord himself comes down to take that soul to Akshardham or the divine abode, whichever that Lord is of. That's why Bhagwan Swami Narayan's uniqueness, his creativity, his thoughts, his principles, his whole method of liberation is different from all others. Moving on, let's take a look at this video. Start from the beginning. Hi, my name is David Blyle. I've been a patient of Dr. Tucker's now for a few years, and I've been struggling with a lot of pain, depression, besides other things, and uh, it seems to have been getting worse, and it just everything, no matter what Dr. Tucker tried with me, it didn't seem to help, until last month I mentioned that I chant and, and meditate, and he said, what? And I mentioned that I say the word OM over and over. He said, can I offer you something else? And I said, yes, of course. And uh, he gave me the name of Swami Narayan. And I took it home with me. And when I got up in the mornings, I, I would get up with, with chaos and struggle and my uh, mixed emotions. And it was very difficult. And I would start saying Swami Narayan. 
स्वामी नारायण स्वामी नारायण and i began to felt feel peace peace in my soul peace in my heart it didn't fix it right away but i needed another knee operation within a few weeks and because something went wrong on the way to the operating room on the table i just kind of under my breath while i was being pushed along down the hall i said swami narayan swami narayan all the way into the cold operating room but i didn't feel all that cold that somehow i felt like swami narayan was hugging me keeping me warm it's me la okay dr tucker for sharing thank you this video is a very heartfelt video that all of you heard of uh of a of a citizen of the united states going to a doctor on uh, by the name of dr tucker and an indian doctor and <laughs> and uh there's a it's it said that this mantra is so strong that this person's problems depression uh internal problems uh physical problems just by dr tucker not giving only prescription medicine but giving the maha mantra swami narayan was so powerful that he started to attain peace of heart and started to become more and more healed his depression started to float away and he started to become very very uh confident and he actually teared up at the end you saw the video and we can see from there that the mantra swami narayan works for everyone it's all the matter of faith in just chanting the name swami narayan so there's hundreds of prasangs that show us the power of the swami narayan mantra maha mantra <clears throat> but we are very for fortunate that we have been given this religion this loidam parivar this guru parampara this satpurush our puja guru ji and all these santos and bhaktos that support us night and day so that we can chant the maha mantra swami narayan swami narayan as much as we want but the only stipulation is that how much do we want to chant bhagwan's name how much do we want to worship bhagwan now you probably understood from these prasangs that the mantra swami narayan is very very powerful the mantra swami narayan is not ordinary so take this into your life infuse this mantra into your life take niyams <clears throat> you all bhaktos would be surprised <clears throat> that our loyadam parivar bal mandal which is very very young of age i can say 10 and younger those bhaktos have niyams every day of chanting 2000 japs 3000 4000 5000 japs in their counter even having school even having homework but not forgetting to do their niyams before going to sleep that is something that you parents whoever are watching can actually establish in your child by encouraging small kinds of tokens and small kinds of gifts and foods if they are willing so then one can do so by giving such kind of tokens when they complete their jap niyam every day so i encourage all of you parents i encourage all of you kids watching i encourage all of you kishores and you as watching that the mantra is very very powerful and we have it in our hands we have it in our back yard let's put it that way but we're not using it to the maximum capacity but bhagwan swami narayan has given it in such a generous way and from these prasangs and from even this man's um actual uh, you can say pra, uh, actual experience it's very very powerful and i hope that all of you feel impelled to chanting the mahamantra swami narayan even more saying this my humble jay swami narayan